when Paul Thomas Anderson was seven years old, he is said to have written in a notebook, my name is Paul Anderson. I want to be a writer, producer, director, special effects man. I know how to do everything and I know everything. Please hire me. His words have proven prophetic by the time he was 17 years old. He made a film short that a decade later became Boogie Nights. That 1997 film earned three Oscar nominations and catapulted him to fame. Today, he is credited with being at the forefront of a new generation of young auteur filmmakers breaking from Hollywood convention. His current film, Magnolia, continues in that tradition, and here is a trailer from the film. Magnolia has been named one of the top ten films of 1999 by both Rolling Stone magazine and the Wall Street Journal. I am pleased to have the director back on this broadcast. Welcome back. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. This Thank you. getting a lot of attention. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> What's this movie about? None of us could figure it out. You know, and it wasn't like someone could figure it out and someone else didn't agree with it. It was really just a, well, it's too hard to describe, so let's just say it's, here's who's in it, these are the characters, and, you know, I mean, I could probably go on forever about what it's about, <laughs> but, you know, you'd hate me in the morning. All right, well, yeah. that's true. But <laughs> let, let me just bring several things to the table. Mm -hmm. First of all, you said you had, you have said in this movie everything you wanted to say about this sort of particular subject. Yeah. The movie's called Magnolia. Magnolia is the name of a boulevard right. in San Fernando Valley, right? right? right. Yeah. Why the title of Magnolia? Well, there's Other that. Than the fact that it's a boulevard in San Fernando Valley. There's that, and on top of that, um, you know what happens, I had the title first, you know, <laughs> and you start to sort of go, well, why is Magnolia sticking in my head? Why do these letters look so nice to me? And it is a boulevard, but, but I started to research uh, a couple different things. And something that came up was the Magonia, which is this a f a mythical place above the firmament where stuff goes and, and hangs out, apparently. You know, so a ship is lost at sea, you know, uh, and then an anchor falls down at some farmer's barn in Iowa. You know, yeah. apparently the ship has been up in, in the Magonia for yeah. a while, hanging out, and then it's dropped its anchor sort of 20 years later. So that sort of weird sort of, you know, uh, right. link, made, so I said, well, okay, this right. is starting to make sense. What's this movie about? You know what it's about? All right, you got me. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what it's about. Here's what it's about. Is it's about uh, parent-children relationship, you know, and, 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 and how that informs who you are, who we are. Um, it's about how you grow up and how that affects who you are. Okay, now let me... Let me they do a good job. No, well, you're getting there, but not quite. I mean, what's interesting about this is, A, your skill, B, yeah. and B, you did say, you said you poured everything you wanted to say yeah. about this particular subject matter into this film. Yeah. What we have in this film, eight stories, mm -hmm. nine characters, mm -hmm. two dying men, yeah. uh, people who are affected by that death, yeah. a nurse, mm -hmm. a trophy wife, mm -hmm. uh, we have a sex guru brilliantly yeah. played by Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. We have a policeman. Mm -hmm. We have a cocaine addict. Mm -hmm. We have all these characters. And they're all there. <laughs> <laughs> and their stories kind of connect. Yeah. The, someone said this is about American angst. Yeah. That's, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. You know what? You know what? That, you know what happened? I just... Uh, I, th I, I said this before, but I did. I set out to write something really small and cheap after Boogie Nights. I wanted to just make a movie. Small and cheap? Yeah. yeah. I just figured the best thing to do here with all this sort of Boogie Nights stuff that was happening and yeah. sort of attention paid to me, it was really nice, but I thought I, got, I wanted I should do my job, you know, and my job is to just make movies. So I sat down and I started to write. And uh, there was so much happening uh, in my life at the time, and I was just going through so much. Um, uh, sort of personal things, you know, that, that I just kept writing. I kept writing what was going on around me, what, whether, it was, whether it was me or people that I knew. Um, you know, I sort of just ended up sort of vomiting out onto the page all the stuff that was around me. So that's what it's about. You know, that's what it's about. It's, it's about me. What part of this movie is about you? All of it. And that's not being cheap, really all of it. I mean, um, you know, um, we all have families yeah. <laughs> that we, uh, you know, have to figure out and deal with and try and... Um, explore what went wrong <laughs> or that, what's going is on. Is that what interests you the most, a sort of sense of the angst or the, the, the dysfunctionality of a life? Sure, yeah, yeah. Because that's where the interesting stuff is. It's, yeah, it's, you know, I think that 
you know, families are just endless, juicy ammunition for great stories. You know, they're never going to let you down for, for good drama or, or, or good comedy. Yeah. Yeah. But here's what else they say about you, is that, that they say in talking about you that that you love your character and it's mm -hmm. all on the screen. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. You're not too critical of these people. You just show who they are. Yeah. And that this is a director who loves these characters, or a writer yeah. who loves these characters, right? Yeah, and I think it's true. I think, well, but I think it comes from the fact that when I write movies, I write them for very specific actors. I mean, it's, these actors are my friends, John Riley, Philip Baker Hall. All right, well, stop. Let's talk about that, because that's really interesting. Uh, well, John Riley plays the cop, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, he was in Boogie Nights. Yeah. It's almost an ensemble. Yeah. But think about who you've got. I mean, you've got some of the hottest actors in the world yeah. in this movie. Start with Tom Cruise. Okay. How'd you get him? He called me after he'd seen Boogie Nights, and that's the phone call <laughs> from the president of the United States of <laughs> Movie Land, you know? And because uh, I wouldn't... It doesn't get any bigger than that. No, literally, it doesn't. You know, it's... And what happened was, it was great, because I wouldn't have called him. I was a huge fan of his work, but it's that ungettable thing, you know, you just don't think, I'll never get Tom Cruise in my movie. Is, so you just kind of think, well, maybe I should try and get somebody else. But he called me, he was a big fan of Boogie Nights. And so I was going to London to promote, uh, to promote it. And um, I, met, I met him on the set of Eyes Wide Shut. And I sort of visited with him and I got to meet Stanley Kubrick. It was sort of a wonderful thing. And so Tom and I just sort of chatted and I, and I was just starting to think of this character that he plays in the movie. And there's just something, just brought up the naughty side in me. I don't know what it was. I just sort of looked and I said, oh, I know exactly what to do here, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I wrote, wrote uh, Frank T.J. Mackey the part for, yeah. for Tom. And, he, and sent it to him eight or nine months later. You know, I said, so let me go away. I'm going to write. I'll send you that. I didn't tell him anything about it. But I said, let me go write this thing, and I'll send it, send it to you. And so, you know, m many months later, when he was finally finishing up Eyes Wide Shut. Many, many, many years mm, later. Yeah, exactly. Well, I came, I came, I met him, and he'd been there for a year and a half already. Yeah. So eight or nine months later, uh, I sent it to him. He, and uh, it was one of those, those dream stories where, you know, you send it to him, and the day that, next day he calls and says, Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Yeah. I'm yours. Let's make it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, but we spent three or four weeks really talking about, you know, sort of sniffing each other out, you know. I think he, you know, sort of, how do you like to work? How do you like to work? Okay, great, you know. This is a long way from Mission Impossible. Y yes and no. I mean, what, What's yes and what's no? What's, what's yes is um, the, the type of character, but no in that good acting is hard no matter what you're doing and it's it's hard to make a movie and it's hard to act so it's it's all challenging and it's really hard to make a good movie that you want to make and an audience wants to see yeah sometimes you can make a good movie you like and want to make an audience doesn't want to see it sometimes you can make a movie that an audience wants to see i've been there <laughs> i've been there a couple times i'll probably be there again <laughs> so he says, says yes yeah. philip seymour hoffman yeah you had him before yeah. He's part of the ensemble. Yeah, because I know can't be him. hotter than he is right now. Uh -huh. Flawless. Ridley. Ripley, right. Ripley, and, I mean. Uh, uh, and, uh, he's also in, he's, God, he's in something else. Yeah. But <laughs> there's a guy who's coming. So great, isn't it? Yeah. It's an amazing thing to, um, I'm such a fan of his since I saw The Scent of a Woman, which is so yeah. long ago. And I sought him out, and I wanted, he was in my very first movie, and he was in Boogie Nights. And, and it's just amazing to watch someone who you, you, you were rooting for get to the point where you can now go to a studio and say, Philip Seymour Hoffman, in my know. movie, and, oh, and they know. You don't have to say, the guy from, you know, the sidekick <laughs> friend. From, they know his name. And it's so great to me. And, it's, and he's an actor who deserves it, too, who's worked his ass off for a long time, been around yeah. for a long time, working really hard. It's just the sweetest And, and the dialogue. talent is just, you just see it. It just comes out of every scene. For real. Yeah. Every act. That was a great thing, too, about Tom, too, is that Tom... Tom was interested, yeah, in being in the movie and working with me, and that's pretty. But he knew Phil Hoffman was going to be in his scenes, you know, and that was an exciting, that was a draw for Tom Cruise. I'm going to get to act with Phil Hoffman, believe it or not. I mean, that's how sort of respected Says Phil something Hoffman about is. Cruise good. Says but something good about Cruise. Tom Cruise is the man. He really is. <laughs> he's, he's a pretty amazing individual. Um, speaking of people who are hot, Julianne Moore. Mm -hmm. How'd you get her? She's got three movies out. She's got three movies out. We had made Boogie Nights together, and I sought her out, you know, uh, 
through a friend of a friend. I was I would have tracked her down no matter what through an agent or some sort of official way. But I got to say, got let's to regroup. Her. Let's get the ensemble ensemble back together. Plus, we're going to add. Oh, in terms of in more. terms of Magnolia, no. The, in terms of Magnolia, getting Julianne, it was from the get go. I called Julianne, said, I'm starting to write. You're you're in it. So mm -hmm. clear your schedule vaguely about a year from now, and that's what that's what. That's and she what said yes, just mm -hmm. like that, because of yeah. the respect she had for you and for Boogie. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, the, 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 there's some sort of really great strokes here. You, Bill Macy's great playing the yeah, part he does. Jason Robards is great playing the part he does. Mm -hmm. But here's a fascinating stroke is Henry Gibson. <laughs> Who's seen Henry Gibson for a while? Yeah, I know. Well, I, that's, I sat down to write this part for Henry Gibson thinking, you know, I need to see Henry Gibson more. And, not, you know, I haven't seen him enough lately. He's so great, you know. Mm -hmm. So you wrote that part with him in mind. Mm-hmm. And then I got really nervous that maybe I haven't seen him around in a while because, uh, you know, he doesn't want to work. May, have I gone through all this and mm -hmm. writing this part? I should have probably called him beforehand and said, can I write a part for you? But I popped uh, his nuts. Here whatever. is a scene. The first scene is when John Riley, who plays Officer Jim, what's the character's name? Jim Curran. Jim Curran, K-U-R-R-I-N-G. He's out on his first date with Claudia, uh, who is the... Okay, take a, take a look at this. She is three-plus hours. Yeah. Any qualms about that? From, from the studio. <laughs> studio. No, well, no, they were very, very nice about it, actually, um, because I, they knew by the script. The script was very, very thick. It was 190. But no one said to you, come on. You know, movies today have to be at the, in a, in a, two in a, hours, not three. No, in a, no, because they were really wonderful, in, 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 in I was, and I was really up front, you know, saying it's going to be three hours. And, you know, I, they were wonderful in saying, okay, we're not going to tell you what to do. We'd love it if this was shorter, you know, but, but so just make it as short as you can okay. because you want to be comfortable with it but know that, you know, it would be nice. But they were wonderful. But they said, we trust you. You're our guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is the word you see constantly in people writing about the film.